I was here to meet the firm who were formed over 20 years ago in 1986. And since then, they've been causing quite a stir. Golden rule is to support team 90 minutes. And if it's necessary, to, to fight for that club. Here they are fighting in Milan in 2000, where they went on the rampage against the Italian police. Dinamo Zagreb is not a big European club. It's not a famous like some English or German clubs, but uh, it's our glory. This incident resulted in over 50 arrests and more than 50 injuries on both sides. We are proud that we are uh, supporters of Dinamo Zagreb. So when it comes to letting the players know they're not happy, they don't bother moaning on a football phone-in. They believe actions speak louder than words. A few times we, we smash their cars and uh, we, we give them a few punches, you know, just for uh, like a yellow card, you know. So what happens when the players deserve a red card? We decided to go to the training, 50 of us, masked, and we took off uh, their... Uh, Shirts, pants, everything, because they didn't deserve a shirt of Dinamo Zagreb. And when Croatian president Franjo Tuzman, who was also the club president, made the mistake of changing the name from Dinamo to Croatia Zagreb, they set fire to his director's box. This has been burned in 1993, when some of our lads didn't know what to do because of the changing the name of the club, they burned all this. Ah, oh, it was a... Eventually they got their way and the name was changed back to Dinamo. It was good. Effectively they run the club. And when I went to see them play, I got an idea of where their power comes from. Bogdan and the Bad Blue Boys agreed to allow me into their stand, but it had been touch and go for a while. Cameras weren't allowed onto the stand, so we could only film from pitch side. It was first versus third in the league, but what shocked me was how few people were there. The Bad Blue Boys had come out in force, but there was hardly anyone else in the stadium. And as for the Vartex fans, they might as well have come in a cab. I realise why the Bad Blue Boys have so much power. Despite their antics, the club needs them. Because if they weren't there supporting the team, nobody would be. I've never experienced nothing like it in the fact that constant singing. For 90 minutes, Bogdan made sure everyone on the stand was in full voice. Stands at the front with his back to the game, takes no notice, big old lumpy as an all. He's a naughty looking geezer. He starts the chant, I don't know what it is, his power though, his passion. And then he puts it down, pipes to everyone. Make sure everyone's singing. Like that, takes everyone in. If there ain't no one singing, he digs them out, he'll find them. Right, mad mince pies, do you know what I mean? Like that barsh. And the singing paid off. As Dinamo ended up 4 1 winners. The following morning, I met up with Bogdan and we went back to the Maximir Stadium. For him, this place is much more than just a football ground. This is our second home, you know? Mm -hmm. Really, when I come to this stand, I forgot of, on everything which is happening in my life. So how often would you say, Bogdan, that there's trouble in Croatia, trouble with the Bad Blue Boys, is it uh... In the 90s it was, uh, or it, it was normal thing, like you eat uh, every day uh, something, mm -hmm. uh, every weekend we had problems. Every away match we had a fight with the police, with, uh, with the other supporters. Mostly uh, police though, yeah? Yes, mostly police because we had a war with the president of the Croatia and the whole government. 
We were enemy number one and the whole police were chasing us. So this was Croatia today. The bad blue boys and the tall cedar. Football firms fighting each other and the police vying to be the number one firm in the country. But the animosity here is nothing compared with the hatred that is felt for their neighbours in Serbia. Because that is about more than just football. They used to share a country and then they went to war. And it was the firms who went to the front line. In May 1990, the former Yugoslavia was on the brink of civil war. Nationalism within the two largest republics, Croatia and Serbia, was at an all-time high. As this political powder keg was about to explode, one of the biggest club matches of the Yugoslav football season took place between Dinamo Zagreb and Red Star Belgrade. Hooliganism generally had been rising through the late 70s and 80s, as it had across Europe. But in, in Yugoslavia, it had a nationalist element. Uh, Red Star were very much Serb nationalists. Dinamo Zagreb were the hardcore of the Croatian nationalists. The Red Star fans went up there with acid to burn down security fences. Both sides had stockpiled locks in the stadium beforehand so they could use them as weapons. Uh, it was prearranged. Everybody knew it was going to go off. And go off it did as the Croats and the Serbs fought out a ferocious battle in an explosion of pent-up nationalism and hatred. This was not just Dinamo v Red Star, the bad blue boys v Delia, this was Croatia v Serbia. Football photographer Toma Mihailovic has covered the game for over 50 years and he was there that day. The atmosphere was like we know that something is not good, but nobody was surprised because we were like, expecting sometimes to go up. During the game, the Red Star fans started tearing up the seats in this end. The bad blue boys of Zagreb, who were in this end here, tried to break down the fences to get to the Red Star. They beat back the police, who, being mostly Serbs, came in for special attention from the bad blue boys. And it wasn't only fans who got involved. When a policeman attacked a Dynamo fan line on the ground, Dynamo's Croatian captain, Boban, decided to exact revenge. Boban's kick was a symbolic moment. It was the beginning of the end for Yugoslavia. For me, it was a sad day, it was a terrible day, and I was feeling that I'm losing something. I have to forget all friends, and all the clubs, and everybody, you know. And I'm feeling that is something we came to the end. And I was sorry about that. And Tomo was right. As a year later, it wasn't punches and kicks that were being exchanged. It was gunfire and grenades, as Croatia and Serbia went to war and the hooligans swapped their firms for their armies and signed up. The civil war raged for four years, with more than 15,000 people killed. And by the end, Croatia and Serbia were two separate countries. It was one of the most incredible stories I'd ever heard. Football hooliganism as a political event, one of the biggest moments in the history of two nations, the start of a war which is still fresh in the mind. We hate them. I cannot uh, tell you with the words what, what do I feel uh, against them. You have uh, in England uh, firms and clubs who, who hate each other, but I really don't think so that you have a such example. And there's certainly nothing in England like the memorial for the members of the firm that died fighting for Croatia. A memorial that shows the riot, which they believe was the real start of the war. This is a statue for, for our brave lads who have been killed in the war, for our freedom, for freedom of our country. This is everything for us. This is like a church, you know. Mm -hmm. Every time we pass here, we make a little pray for our guys. It's a very, very, very emotional part of the stadium for us. It's very powerful. Yes. <laughs>